Alright guys, and welcome to another video. Today we are investigating the true death of World of Warcraft, which in my humble opinion, started with the addition of Patch 3.3. So when I say the death of World of Warcraft, I'm talking about the precise point where the subscriber count started declining, rather than increasing, which as many people know, was towards the end of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Obviously World of Warcraft is by no means a dead game, there's still many many people playing it, many people subscribed to the game. Although The Elder Scrolls Online has about 2 million co-current players, so the spot for the top dog may change in some time in the future. Nonetheless, we're going to be talking about the fatal wound that hit World of Warcraft in the gut and forever since has been slowly bleeding to death. And obviously that is patch 3.3 fall of a lich king but just before jumping guys please do give me a quick flow on twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams so at a first glance 3.3 doesn't really seem like a bad patch because as far as content goes it's one of the last patches that world of warcraft well blizzard ever made that introduced a massive amount of content we had three extra dungeons to mess around with and also obviously a new raid tier we had the Forge of Souls, Pit of Sauron, and Halls of Reflection, both in normal and heroic difficulty, and then obviously Ice Crown Citadel came out, which was a big 13 boss raid. So a lot of content for us to mess around with. It's one of the last times, you know, if you compare it to patches that come out these days, it's a lot of content compared to the average patch on retail today. But unfortunately, patch 3.3 did add the matchmaking dungeon finder. I remember when the dungeon finder actually came out, I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. I was very excited about it and I thought it was like the best thing to ever happen to World of Warcraft. And I think a lot of people were in that same boat. A lot of people didn't realize the the underlining issues with adding a matchmaking dungeon finder system into a multiplayer online game. So let me read out how Blizzard described the cross realm dungeon finder. Another really bad part of it was that it was actually cross realm. The dungeon finder is now available, providing players with quick and easy access to five player parties. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? The feature connects all realms of a battle group using an advanced matchmaking system, making it easier for all players of all levels to find a dungeon group. In addition, players can reap additional rewards through the dungeon finder by choosing a random option which is available to both pick up and preformed groups. Check out user interface section for more details. So there's one very key problem with a matchmaking system and people in order to understand this right you have to understand one of the key aspects of world of warcraft that is the world of warcraft the clue really is in the name this is a multiplayer online game one of the massive unique selling points of an mmo is that there's a huge world for you to go out into and explore and what a matchmaking system does in an mmo is forces you to unexplore that world it makes the game feel smaller because you can just instantly teleport to a dungeon which by the way makes absolutely no sense at all it's massively immersion breaking because there was no way that it was implemented in a way to make it lore friendly like mage is teleporting you to a dungeon like you go to an inn and there'll be like a mage there that can teleport you to certain dungeons there was nothing like that it was something you pressed on your action bars or your micro bar and there you go, Bob's your uncle, you're in, you're in a dungeon. It's it's no different to like queuing Team Slayer in Halo or Team Deathmatch in Call of Duty. In my opinion, I just simply think that a matchmaking system, matchmaking features don't belong in an MMO. It kills community and the actual need to make friends because you can just experience the content without making friends because you just have to press a button on your action bar and there you go. The, the game just does it all for you. You can clear content, you can get gear, without ever actually needing to talk to someone. And, I mean, you may as well just play Team Deathmatch. And, you know, when you're ranking up in Call of Duty, you get better guns, you get better skins and all that kind of thing. You don't really need to talk to anyone playing that game. You may as well be playing Call of Duty. And the whole point of an MMO RPG is totally removed. The main thing that matchmaking Dungeon Finder really did ruin was the actual leveling experience. Because... Leveling used to be about going out into the world, going on adventures, making friends if you needed to go and do a group quest, and joining a social leveling guild and just having a general normal MMO experience. But because of the dungeon finder, 
you had a much lazier, easier option to just press something on your action bars, you get randomly grouped up with a load of people, you go and kill mobs, and that's it. You basically, again, like you're basically just like playing some kind of team deathmatch, because you're just joining a dungeon and killing stuff forever and ever for like 40 hours of gameplay, probably even more. So where is the actual fun in that? It's a massively boring, grindy experience, and it's why retail players largely consider leveling to be a chore. And why would you want to play a video game that is a chore? There's no wonder that the subscriber count isn't increasing. It's because they've made the leveling experience a chore. All you do is kill the mobs in the dungeon, and then that's it. And Dungeon Finder, pretty much ever since its conception, has been the best best option to gain XP because of that random dungeon experience bonus. It would have been fine if they introduced a daily cap on it, or you have to complete a certain amount of quests, or gain a certain amount of experience in the open world doing quests and killing mobs in the open world before you can actually go and join a dungeon. There should have been some kind of restricted access to the dungeon finder so that people just don't spam it. But people just spam it and don't really get the real World of Warcraft MMO experience. You're basically just getting a matchmaking experience. Uh, ironically, what they did in Cataclysm is they revamped all the zones in Cataclysm, all the questing areas, to make them much better. They increased the amount of cinematics there was and just generally improved the questing experience. But the thing is, nobody saw that content because everyone was just doing Dungeon Finder instead. I would say like only about 10-20% of people were actually would actually level exclusively from doing like, well just not by not by doing dungeons. And the only people doing that were probably people with leveling guides. Because technically leveling, following a specific leveling route like a Zygor guide or something would be faster than doing the dungeon finder. But obviously doing the dungeon finder is just like, it requires a lot less, you know, thought and a lot less thinking. I mean, another reason why people didn't see these new zones is because everyone was already higher level anyway. And pe a lot of people probably couldn't be bothered leveling at all. So they wasted development time revamping the starter area you know, revamp well not just the starter area, but the starting zones, the level 1 to 60 zones, when they could have spent that development time making more content for, well, more, making more endgame content, because there's a massive trend from basically Cataclysm onwards of there being simply a lack of endgame content to keep players interested in the game. And, yeah, so, like, it was basically, they basically shot themselves in the foot by revamping the Cataclysm areas. Furthermore, in the last patch of Cataclysm, they added Raid Finder, which basically meant you never had to do anything in the game other than press things on your micro bar. You can experience every single piece of content by just pressing your micro bar. I mean, fair enough, as you know, normal and heroic difficulty were more difficult, but they're more or less exactly the same. And you know, it's the same boss and the same looks and everything like that. So you're not really getting much more out of the experience if you just complete the raid on a you know, more difficult difficulty. So, I mean, people just weren't getting an MMO experience. People were just getting a matchmaking experience. And then to top this off, they decided to release an entire expansion based on pandas. Pandas and Pokemon. I mean, could you shoot yourself in the foot anymore? To be honest, like, and I remember when Miss and Pandaria was actually announced. I was talking to my girlfriend at the time. And I was just like, I cannot, I just could not believe it. I, I just thought, it started out as an April Fool's joke, and then it didn't stop being an April fool, fool joke. It, it, the whole expansion was an April Fool's joke. It was a joke. And that massively deterred people from playing the game, because it became a much less serious, much less serious MMO. I mean, you, re you release an entire expansion based on pandas, and w w what are you doing? <laughs> Obviously, like, no person with two brain cells and any common sense would do that to a game like World of Warcraft, but they did do it. And then to make things even worse, later on in Legion they introduced a cross-realm pre-made finder, which was m essentially I would call the nail in the coffin, because now, you, yeah, you really just simply do not need to actually go out into the world and do anything. Because you want to do raid finder, you press a button, you want to do dungeons, you press a button, now, if you want to do mythic dungeons, you just press a button and you get teleported by the group leader. You want to do a, a raid like a normal raid, again, you just get teleported, uh, summoned there by the raid leader. Or, if you want to do heroic, you get summoned by the raid leader. Um, the only time that you ever need to go out into the world is to do world quests, which are extremely repetitive and boring. And, you know, to go to your raid to do mythic raiding. So, 
overall the game has become it's become a smaller much smaller world much more of a boring matchmaking system and less of an MMO less uh, of a community aspect of the game and yeah that's that's what in my opinion has killed World of Warcraft this is the reason why the subscriber counts uh, for one are never released anymore because of a low and embarrassing and Blizzard don't want to release them because they have nothing to brag about they've obviously been slowly declining since patch 3.3 and they probably will continue to do so, in all honesty. Maybe Shadowlands will bring a few things back, but it's it's very unlikely. Especially if they've released a Burning Crusade. More people will be playing these legacy servers than actual retail, in my opinion. And I think it will get to a point where uh, MMOs like The Elder Scrolls Online, which is a pretty good MMO. Um, I've actually considered playing it a few times. I'm pretty sure there's a new MMO coming out soon, which is quite interesting, like Pantheon. There's a lot of cool MMOs coming out on the horizon, which may take the spot for the top dog. Technically, they probably won't take the spot for the top dog because of legacy servers, but if we're comparing the statistics of the Elder Scrolls Online to actual retail World of Warcraft, then it's probably... That margin is probably getting more and more narrow as time goes on. So it will, it will actually be quite interesting if that ever happens. But anyway, uh, I'm going to stop ranting there. My name is Metagoblin, to my next video. Ciao.